Hi, I'm Pastor Goodman. And this is the Lord who God's life. So, I wonder if part of the problem that everybody seems to find when it comes to the Lord's Supper, part of the reason that we are so hesitant to receive it as the good gift that it is, is that you can commune wrong. I mean, the scriptures are pretty clear. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 says, Let a person examine himself that, and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. That's why many of you are weak and ill, and some have died. You see, people in Corinth were communing wrong and bad stuff was happening and we don't want to commune wrong that bad stuff would happen. And I'm not saying that if you do it wrong, you'll drop dead on the spot, but I am saying that clearly something is going on. And yeah, stranger things have happened. Because here's the thing about the Lord's Supper. It is what God says it is, no matter what you believe, because it rests on God's word and not on you or your faith or your desire for it. To eat and drink what God calls his body and blood is to be near God. And to be near God only brings about one of two things. It either brings blessing or destruction. And that all hinges on one thing and one thing only. Are you holy? Because to be near God and to be unholy, unclean, that's to yield destruction. And to be near God and be holy, that's to receive blessing. So here's the thing. If communion is on you, communion is kind of a hurdle. Just one more rung to climb on the somehow impossible, but everybody's going to get their ladder to heaven. Like, understand why people have a problem with communion and why some people don't want to take it often like the Lord commands. Understand why some people want to downplay what it is and just want to focus on them remembering stuff. How hard is it to make yourself holy? I mean, how do you even do that? Even faking holiness is more effort that we want to give, at least very often. And so we'll talk about things like kindness instead of holiness. We'll talk about niceness instead of righteousness. Because to be holy, that is a potent potent thing. And if it is on me, it's not going to go well. But if it's on God to make you holy, communion becomes a gift received by right faith, apart from anything that you could ever do on your own. And there, you can actually start to see communion as a good gift from God, a blessing. And the truth behind it is that, well, communion is given because you can't do this stuff on your own. In the large catechism, Luther writes, The treasure indeed is opened and placed at everyone's door, yea, upon his table. But it is necessary that you also claim it and confidently view it as the word suggests to you. This now is the entire Christian preparation for receiving the sacrament worthily. For since this treasure is entirely presented in the words, it cannot be apprehended and appropriated in any other way than with the heart. For such a gift and ex eternal treasure cannot be seized with a fist. Fasting and prayer, etc., may indeed be an external preparation and discipline for children that the body may keep and bear itself modestly and reverently toward the body and blood of Christ. Yet what is given in and with it, the body cannot seize and appropriate. But this is done by the faith of the heart which discerns this treasure and desires it. See, here's the thing. Um, Satan wants to make God's gifts into curses. He wants to make gifts into burdens, blessings, into something else that you have to do. And so we have people struggling with communion because they feel too sinful. They recognize they haven't prayed enough or some other work is lacking on their part. Um, the thing is, those works, they are good. The praying, you should pray. The sinning, it's bad. Don't do it. You know what? Even fast, too, while you're at it once in a while, it's useful for bodily discipline. That's good. But it's not going to make you holy. It's not going to get you on the right side with God before coming to the place where he accomplishes it for you. But it's not on you to get right with God before coming to the place where he accomplishes it for you. Like, understand that. What's required is simple. Faith. Trust. Given by the Holy Spirit to sinners who can't come up with it on their own, who cannot by their own reason or strength believe. Hear the promise of what these words say to you. 
and by the power of the Holy Spirit, believe. This is my body. This is my blood. This is for you, for the forgiveness of all your sins. This is a treasure that God gives to you. Then communion becomes actually a lot simpler. Is this Jesus' body and blood? I mean, he says so. He created the world with words, and words are potent things. I know it just because I still have hurt feelings from names I got called in the fourth grade. But Jesus' words are so potent that they actually accomplish the very things that they speak. Let there be light. Light. This is my body. Body. So is that Jesus' body and blood? Yeah. Mm. Are you a sinner who needs it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so why would you want to stay away from communion then? I mean, yes, there, there is a confession that we make by communing at a congregation. We believe that the stuff going on here is true, and we speak this before God and before everyone else there when we commune at a church. So in the same way that no, I won't march in a parade with the KKK, I also won't say before God and men that I believe with those who confess about my Lord wrongly. But this isn't written there. This is written to those who are afraid to take communion. Hear Christ's word, which accomplishes what it promises. It gives the faith that yields the holiness to rightly receive the gift. It gives the trust to hear Christ's promise and then receive communion as a treasure and not a burden. Because communion is not taken as some sort of academic exam with a reward at the end. Communion is given as a gift for sinners in need of it. So here's the thing. Listen to what God calls this, his body and his blood for you, for the forgiveness of sins, and recognize that here God is giving you a treasure, not a mountain to climb. He is giving you a gift that yields life because we are dying inside. He is giving to you forgiveness and life and salvation because these are not things that was ever your job to come up with yourself. They were always meant to be gifts from God. And now, now you actually know where he's giving them to you so you can be certain that you've had them. Look to the gifts that God places on that altar. Listen to the word that God joins to the bread and the wine that they would become body and blood and see the Lord's Supper for what exactly it is. A treasure. 